Here are the top stories for today, May 6, 2021. No nose is out. President Rodrigo Duterte orders the arrest of those not wearing face masks properly as he stresses the importance of strict measures in fighting COVID-19. Travel curbs tightened. Travelers from four more South Asian countries are barred from entering the country starting tomorrow to prevent the entry of a double mutant strain from India. From number two to number one, Lieutenant General Guillermo Eleazar will take over as the new chief of the police force as outgoing de Boltzinas retires on Saturday. And we tell you how this tricycle driver proved that honesty is still the best policy despite being in dire need amid the pandemic. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. While uh, most people are wearing face masks, some are doing it the wrong way. This earned the ire of President Rodrigo Duterte, and now he wants people who are not wearing masks properly to be arrested. Duterte said he is frustrated over violations of the minimum health protocols. They don't mask. Yung iba, Ano nang, uh, for compliance lang, naglalagay ng mas pero nakalabas yung ilong. E detain mo, da, tapos uh, investigahin mo siya kung bakit ganun ang behavior nila. Kaya hindi yan akin, hindi amin. Para yan sa interest ng bayan. Na hindi ka makahawa, hindi ka mahawa, hindi ka mag hindi mahawa ano. Meanwhile, Health Secretary Francisco Duque also stressed the need to follow the minimum health protocols, such as wearing a face mask and face shield. He said that even those who have been vaccinated should not be complacent. So, kahit na may bakuna na tayo, sir, pwede pa rin tayong mahawa. Pwede rin tayong makahawa doon sa mga mahal natin sa uh, bahay. At uh, ang ginagawa lang po ng bakuna ngayon is to prevent yung severe COVID, prevent hospitalization, and therefore prevent deaths. The country is seeing an improving COVID-19 situation after the government imposed stricter community quarantine status in the past weeks. Health Secretary Francisco Duque, during his report to President Duterte, explains that the number of COVID-19 cases nationwide decreases. Meron po tayo nakikita ang pag-unlad at uh, uh, improvements at uh, una rito ay ang uh, pagbaba ng kaso uh, sa buong uh, uh, Pilipinas at bumabagal rin ang bilis ng pagtaas ng mga kaso at makakita na tayo sa NCR Plus ang mga bagong kaso ngayon ay mas mababa na kumpara sa mga kaso pong naiulat noong uh, simula ng ECQ. Pangalawa po, patuloy na bumubuti ang atin pong uh, healthcare and ICU utilization nationwide dahil na rin nagkaroon tayo ng pagkakataon na palawigin ang health system capacity noong tayo ay nagtaas sa ECQ at maingat na nag-transition naman sa MECQ. The Department of Health clarifies its earlier statement about the six passengers that enter the country from India. It says there are only five individuals who enter the country from India and four of them are already recovered, while the other one is currently staying at an isolation facility. The DOH also reports that there are 149 passengers from India that arrived in the country on April 29. They were quarantined and tested on their sixth or seventh day. The government, imposed an ent the government has imposed an entry ban on inbound passengers from India following its detection of yet another COVID-19 variant which has resulted in massive number of COVID-19 cases there. Vaccine czar Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. announced that about 7 million vaccines are set to arrive in the country within the month. He said they are expected to receive the supply from the World Health Organization's COVAX facility. During his report to President Duterte, Galvez said there are about 1 to 2 million doses of AstraZeneca vaccines that will be coming, although he did not announce the date. Other vaccines, such as Pfizer, are scheduled to arrive this month with 1.3 million doses. Out of the said number, some 193,000 doses are scheduled for the initial rollout next week. 
He also said that about 1 to 2 million Sputnik V vaccines will arrive this month. He assures that the country will get a steady supply of COVID-19 vaccines by June. President Rodrigo Duterte is hopeful that the ongoing clinical trials of ivermectin would show positive results that it can be used for humans to treat COVID-19 disease. He said ivermectin may be effective in treating the patients as some physicians are willing to risk their integrity in prescribing it to their patients. Maraming doktor bumilib niyan. Kaya baka, if there are doctors willing to put out their uh, neck, uh, on the chopping board, iposta nila integrity nila. So there has to be some truth in it. Or at least ang medicina or whatever it is has, has, has an effect in fighting COVID or building the antibodies in your system. The Department of Science and Technology is conducting the clinical trials of ivermectin for human use against COVID-19. Food and Drug Administration or FDA Director General Eric Domingo said he expects that the local clinical trials would be completed within six to eight months, while international clinical trials may be completed in the next one to two months. He also said that it is best to wait for clearer evidence that the antiparasitic drug can benefit COVID-19 patients. The Philippines has barred the entry of travelers coming from Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Sri Lanka to curb the spread of a reported double-muted coronavirus strain found in India. In a memorandum released by the Office of Executive Secretary Salvador Mendialdea, all passengers coming from or who have been to these countries within the last 14 days shall be prohibited from entering the country starting tomorrow, May 7, until May 12. Meanwhile, all Filipino passengers from the said countries within 14 days shall be required to undergo a 14-day quarantine period despite acquiring a negative RT-PCR result. All closed contacts must undergo facility-based quarantine for 14 days and contact tracing shall expand up to the third-generation contacts. Meanwhile, the Department of Health wants travelers entering the country to undergo another COVID-19 test on the 7th or 8th day of their quarantine. The DOH says it will recommend the measure to the IATF as the virus can be accurately determined on those days. Returning overseas Filipino workers and other travelers are currently being tested on the fifth day of their quarantine upon arrival. In our four news, Greeks flocked to cafes and restaurants as cafeterias, restaurants and bars reopened after a six-month shutdown. Businesses are only allowed to serve seated customers outdoors with a maximum six persons per table and with the safe distances between tables. Waiters are obliged to wear protective face masks and take two COVID-19 tests per week. Meanwhile, a team of Chinese medical experts arrived in Lao capital Vientiane to assist Lao in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. Lao has been seeing a surge of COVID-19 infections recently. The country confirmed 60 new cases on Tuesday, bringing the total number of cases to 1,026. Here is a look at the COVID-19 cases around the world. Still to come, no end to strong words, President Rodrigo Duterte lashes back at two former government officials over the West Philippine Sea issue. And the National Kidney Transplant Institute launches a modular hemodialysis facility. Details ahead, this is the PNA Newsroom. Alamin kung paano ang tamang pagsusuot ng surgical mask. Una, hawakan ang mask sa strap at siguruhin natatakpan nito ang inyong bibig at ilong. Tandaan, ang may kulay na bahagi ng mask ang dapat nasa labas. 
Ito lamang ang tamang paraan ng pagsuot nito. Ihulma ang nose piece o maliit na metallic strip ayon sa hugis ng inyong ilong. Iwasan ang paghawak sa inyong ilong at bibig. Kung marumi na ang mask, hubarin nito gamit ang strap at itapon nito sa isang basurahan. Siguruhin ang maayos na paghuhugas ng kamay gamit ang sabon at tubig. Ang surgical mask ay dapat gamitin ng mga pasyenteng may sakit sa baga o mga taong mayroong ubo, sipon at lagnat, mga nag-aalaga sa mga may sakit, at mga healthcare at frontline workers. Maaari ring magsuot nito kung kayo ay pupunta sa matataong lugar. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to! Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. President Rodrigo Duterte on Wednesday says he wants to launch an investigation into the Philippines' withdrawal of its ships in the West Philippine Sea amid the 2012 standoff with China. In his tape public address, Duterte said he wants to ask former Supreme Court Associate Justice Antonio Carpio and former Foreign Affairs Secretary Albert Del Rosario why they let the Philippines withdraw the Philippine vessels in Scarborough Shoal in 2012. Duterte said he wants to know if his predecessor, former President Benigno Aquino III, allowed Del Rosario to withdraw the Philippine ships in Scarborough Shoal. Duterte also said it would be a waste of time to invoke the sea ruling in favor of the Philippines. Duterte said he had attempted to assert the 2016 ruling, but the Philippines gained nothing. On July 12, 2016, the Philippines won its case against China after the Hague-based Permanent Court of Arbitration ruled that China has no legal basis to claim historic rights over almost the strategic waters. President Rodrigo Duterte said Chinese President Xi Jinping told him that former Supreme Court Associate Justice Antonio Carpio and former Foreign Secretary Albert Del Rosario practically gave Philippine Islands as a gift to China. In a pre-recorded speech late Monday night, Duterte lashed out at Carpio and Del Rosario, reminding them about the faux pas when the country lost control over Panatag Shoal to China during the previous administration. He blamed them for bringing misery to the country over the past government's decision to withdraw ships from the Scarborough Shoal. Duterte questioned Carpio's efforts to resolve the Philippines' conflict with China during his term at the Supreme Court. On the other hand, he said Del Rosario is responsible for the Philippines losing possession of the Scarborough Shoal. Duterte has stood pat on a careful, calibrated, and calculated approach to the maritime row with China since he assumed office in 2016. Fishermen in the West Philippine Sea are encouraged to continue with their business as China's unilateral fishing ban set from May 1st to August 16 does not apply to them. The National Task Force for the West Philippine Sea Chair Hermogenes Esperon Jr. also said the task force China's imposition of the fishing ban over the areas within the territory and jurisdiction of the Philippines. With this, the patrols and maritime exercises in the West Philippine Sea and Municipality of Kalayaan by the Philippine Coast Guard and the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources will continue as directed by the President. Aside from maritime patrols, the Area Task Force West also regularly conducts joint seaborne patrols around the Pagasa Islands. Esperon said the NTF WPS emphasizes that the exercises and patrols are part of activities in the exercise of Philippine sovereignty. Meantime, they welcomed the recent diplomatic protests filed by the Department of Foreign Affairs against the illegal Chinese activities in the Philippine territory and exclusive economic zone. The National Kidney and Transplant Institute has opened a new modular facility to help COVID-19 patients with kidney problems. More on this and other news from Late Kabagan. The National Kidney and Transplant Institute in Quezon City launched on Wednesday a new modular hemodialysis facility to maintain unhampered public service amid the pandemic. The modular hospital will serve as a standalone facility for COVID-19 patients that need to undergo hemodialysis. The new facility has 20 dialysis stations that can service up to 60 patients per day. 
a 32-bed air-conditioned dormitory complete with amenities for healthcare workers was also opened at the NKTI. In Zamboanga City, the city government is finalizing preparations for the operations of its own molecular testing center for COVID-19. The 14 million facility located in Barangay San Roque is now 90% complete. Mayor Maria Isabel Climaco Salazar said that in addition to the testing machines donated by Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte, other equipment has been procured by the city government and is awaiting delivery. Once operational, the city government-owned testing center can run 300 tests per day. Meanwhile, Negros Oriental will soon have a new testing facility for COVID-19 once the Siliman University Medical Center Foundation Incorporated is granted accreditation by the Department of Health. Assistant Provincial Health Officer Dr. Leland Estacion said the SUMCFI will coordinate with the province's interagency task force for management of emerging infectious diseases to have a synchronized release of results and cases. Once approved by the DOH, the SUMCFI Molecular Laboratory will be the second COVID testing center in Negros Oriental. The first is the Negros Oriental Provincial Hospital Molecular Laboratory. For the Penny Newsroom, I'm Laid Kabagani. More stories from the newsroom. It is official. The country has a new chief of the police force. We tell you more about him later. And two ranking NPA rebels and their armed struggle and return to the folds of the law. Back after a quick break, stay with the PNA Newsroom. Alamin ang tamang paraan ng pag-ubo upang mapigilan ang paglaganap ng coronavirus disease 2019. Ugaliing magdala ng panyo o tissue. Kung uubo o babahing, takpan ang buong ilong at bibig gamit ang panyo o tissue. Kung walang dalang panyo o tissue, maaaring gamitin ang braso na pantakip. Kung nakararamdam na kailangan umubo o bumahing, agad na dumistansya sa mga tao sa paligid. Huwag dumura kung saan-saan, gumamit ng tissue at itapon sa basurahan. Ugaliin ang paghuhugas ng kamay at paggamit ng alcohol o hand sanitizer upang mamatay ang mikrobyo. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. You're still watching the PNA Newsroom. Lieutenant General Guillermo Lorenzo Eliazar on Wednesday expressed his sincerest gratitude to President Rodrigo Duterte for choosing him to be the next chief of the Philippine National Police. In a statement, Eliazar thanked Duterte for choosing him to help realize a well-disciplined and professional police force. He said to be appointed as the chief PNP is a rare opportunity, but it comes with the challenges of good leadership and meeting the high expectations of the Filipino people. Eliazar also thanked Interior Secretary Eduardo Año for always believing in his capability to lead the more than 220,000 strong PNP. Malacanang confirmed on Wednesday that Duterte has signed Eliazar's appointment to replace PNP Chief General Debold Sinas. Eliazar will be the 26th Chief of the PNP who, like Sinas, belongs to the Philippine Military Academy, Hinirang Class of 1987. Año said Eliazar has shown his ability, integrity, and professionalism in the positions he has occupied in the police organization. The Philippine Statistics Authority in Antique is nearing its goal for the Step 2 registration for the National Identification System with over 202,000 already listed out of the 222,250 target. PSA Antique Officer in Charge Randy Tagokdoy said, despite the suspension of registrations in the municipalities due to the COVID-19 threat, they are glad that they are still able to hit 91% of registrations. 
Of the 18 towns in the province, only Kaluya, Libertad, and Anini did not have registration suspension due to low occurrence of COVID-19 infections. Meanwhile, registration for San Jose de Buena Vista will end at Robinson's Mall Antique on May 20 and on May 26 at the Delegate Angel Salazar Jr. Memorial School. Other municipalities will also end their municipal registrations on May 31. Registrants just have to bring any of their identification cards, original birth certificate, and barangay certification. In sports, the national rowing team thanked the Philippine Sports Commission as it starts its campaign in the 2021 World Rowing Asian Oceanian Olympic Qualification Regatta in Tokyo, Japan on Wednesday. Melka Jen Caballero and Joni Delgaco are vying for the women's lightweight women double skulls from May 5 to 7. Zuriel Sumintak and Roque Abala are competing in the men's lightweight double skulls while Chris Nevares is in the men's single skulls. Rowing coach Edgardo Maerina thanked the PSC for supporting and monitoring their health and progress. For his part, PSC chairman Butch Ramirez says he hopes for more qualifiers from the national team. He assured that the PSC will give all-out support for the country's athletes. Hunger, low morale, and longing for family drove two ranking leaders of the New People's Army to surrender to government troops in Agusan del Norte. Lieutenant Colonel Julio Cesar Paulo, commander of the Army's 23rd Infantry Battalion, welcomed alias Haji or Saed, the Front Secretary of the NPA Guerrilla Front 88, and alias Maimai or Wena, a political officer during their surrender at the 23ID headquarters. Haji said he could no longer endure the difficulties they experience inside the movement. He said the members have become demoralized because of lack of food, especially since most of their supporters in Agusan del Norte and Agusan del Sur have cut ties with the movement. Haji also wishes to reunite with his family. Paolo said the testimony of alias Haji indicates the disintegration of the NPA movement in Agusan del Norte amid the mass surrenderers of their supporters. The kindness of humanity continues to flourish amid the pandemic. In Butuan City, a tricycle driver proved that honesty is still the best policy through returning a large sum of money to its rightful owner despite being in need himself. Jerwin Udarte Abuso went to the city information office after he recovered a bag left by one of his passengers on May 4. The bag owned by Manilin Poliga contained 20,000 pesos and some important documents. Poliga said the cash was intended to buy materials for the repair of their house. Last Wednesday, the CIO recognized the honesty and righteousness of the tricycle driver. For his part, Abuso said that despite the difficult situation nowadays, he did not hesitate to return the bag to its owner. He said his instincts told him that the owner needed the money and that returning it was the right thing to do. Here's another look at today's biggest stories. No nose is out. President Rodrigo Duterte orders the arrest of those not wearing face masks properly as he stresses the importance of strict measures in fighting COVID-19. Travel curbs tightened. Travelers from four more South Asian countries are barred from entering the country starting tomorrow to prevent the entry of a double mutant strain from India. From number two to number one, Lieutenant General Guillermo Eleazar will take over as the new chief of the police force as outgoing to Bold Sinas retires on Saturday. And we tell you how this tricycle driver proved that honesty is still the best policy despite being in dire need amid the pandemic. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check more news content, visit our webpage or head onto the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. 
For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, we tell stories that inspire change. I am William Theo. Good day. Stay safe, everyone.